Okay, if you bear with me, I'm going to reveal to you one of the biggest lost secrets, basically the biggest lost secret of the ancient Pythagoreans. These peace-loving people who were so against uh, violence and even against eating meat, the one thing for which they were accused and rumored to have murdered one person for, for releasing the secrets of incommensurability. Okay, I'm going to show you some really neat stuff here. And you're not going to find this or read about this anywhere on the internet because I'm the one that discovered it. Um, but it's going to become very, very clear to you very quickly in this video. And if you bear with me in this video, I promise to show you something fascinating. Whether at the end you think that's interesting or not, obviously I can't influence that. But you will certainly find it fascinating. I'm pretty sure of that. Now, now we have the current word uh, which actually derives from this ancient goddess. We're not going to be talking about goddesses, okay? So use this as a starting off point. We get the word hygiene from the word hygieia, the goddess uh, for uh, hygiene. Now, this is all words change meaning over time. So now we're left with a connotation rather than denotation. The original meaning of this, and this is uh, upsilon, gamma, iota, Epsilon, Iota, and Alpha. And in short form, with five letters, it's Epsilon, Gamma, Iota, Theta, and Alpha. Right? Okay. The original meaning of this, and this is the exact symbol, this Pythagorean uh, triangle I have tattooed in my hand here in green, with uh, a ratio of 1, 1, Phi, and 1 over Phi. And then we'll try to draw that for you here. And then I'm going to make something really obvious to you in the, this video. Just bear with me, okay? I promise things will become really obvious, and then your eyes will open up nice and big, okay? This original term referred to proportionality, perfection, incommensurability, and ratio. It is the case that this uh, goddess that was represented as a female, this is still used today. Of course, it means hygiene, means clean. We know that in health, obviously, if someone's body is out of kilter or out of proportion, that they're unhealthy. Now, there is something today used in medical symbolism that looks like this. It's called the bowl of Hygieia. It looks like a bowl, right? It's a uh, doctor and a medical and a, a pharmacist symbol for giving somebody elixir or medicine, you know, whatever to get them back into health. Let's get their body back into proportionality. So you can understand how this word for proportionality, perfection, and incommensurability would de-evolve the de-evolution of the word into simply meaning hygiene or health. The original meaning of this, trust me, it's going to get really interesting really quick, bear with me, how this would de-evolve into such a meaning. Okay? So here we have this triangle, which by the way has the apex of 108 by 36 by 36 degrees. This is a true Pythagorean triangle. Okay. Let me show you something here, and this is only going to be the start of it. Okay. Now, I don't want any people bringing up New Age uh, nonsense into this. I'm talking about the original use of this. The absolute original. So here we take it necessitates three triangles to create this pentagram. Now, it's found on ancient Greek uh, coins. This particular... So I won't tell you what's on the other side. It take a long time to discuss it. But on this, and at five points, we find Upsilon, Gamma, Iota, and the short form of uh, Epsilon and Iota, Theta. Instead of Yugeia, it becomes Yugata. So we have Theta here, and up here we have Alpha. So this is what we find on some really ancient Greek coins. This is a Pythagorean pentagram, and it represents hygieia, or yugata, or yugeia, meaning per perfection, proportionality. Now, I'll have you point out this central um, triangle here, just like the central diagram that's tattooed on my hand, that the vertical is not intersected right here, because that is not incommensurable. The vertical is intersected right here. Right? This is where this triangle is intersected, right at this location. Right? Great. Let's move on to something else, and then it will keep getting better and better, faster and faster. I promise you. Just bear with me. This is a hidden secret of the Pythagoreans that I discovered in Plato's Republic 509D to 511. It's called the Divided Line. Okay? 
This is really neat. You'll like this one. Bear with me, okay? Trust me. It's going to get better faster and faster and faster and faster. Just bear with me, okay? Here we have a line. The instructions are that we divide that line unevenly. Mm, okay. There's an uneven division of the line. Now we're going to take each one of these sections. We have either side here. And we're going to divide each one of these sections unevenly as well. Direct proportionality. Okay. There we go. So now we have four sections. Okay. You see this little math formula that I discovered here on the side of my hand? It says 1 over, 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3. Okay, let's explore that for a second. This is the lost secret. See, Plato was a Pythagorean. The notion that someone's a Pythagorean or a Platonist is an absolute BS modern connotation. There's no difference. A Platonist was a Pythagorean and a Pythagorean was a Platonist. Okay? Whoever came first, we know who came first. It doesn't matter. The point is that the metaphysics are exactly the same. So, now, let's take a look at this proportionality of perfection. And then I'm going to show you something neat, and then something neater and neater. Okay? Here we have the ratio of phi. This section is equal to 1, and this section is equal to 1. And over here, we have 1 over phi. This section is 1. This section is 1. This section is 1 over phi, and this section is 1.618033, blah, 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 blah. But all of this together is, of course, the original single line, 1. This is also why the mathematical uh, absolute is that phi is to 1 is 1 is to phi. Phi and 1 are 1 and the same thing. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, et cetera, et cetera, approaching incommensurability, that which you call the golden section or the golden proportion or the golden ratio. But all of these together, now that we have one line that's been subdivided in perfection and incommensurability, we have 1.618, 1, uh, 1 and 1, and 1 over 5, which is 0 0.618033, and the totality of these together is 4.23606, etc., 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 which is phi cubed. Okay. Or... Phi to the power of negative 3. This is the incommensurability of the Pythagoreans. Phi is to 1, or phi cubed, and phi squared is equal to 1. This is Pythagorean incommensurability. All I did was take a single line as a Plato, and Plato got the, this from the Pythagoreans, and who knows, maybe the Egyptians before them. I took 1, this is 1, a single line. I divided it unevenly. I took each one of those sections and divided it unevenly. And I end up with perfect proportionality. Phi, 1, 1, and 1 over phi, which equals in totality phi cubed, 4.23606. Right? 1 over 2.3606 equals phi cubed. Okay, well, that's not fascinating enough for me. All right, not fascinating enough for you. Sure, let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the basis of life. Okay, this is it. Now you'll read that the proportionality is like 104.45 degrees on the dihydrous oxide molecule, i.e. water. You know, the necessity for all life, but the actual angle is just a little bit different. And then we have the exact same triangle here, which forms the basis for all life in the universe, which is 108, 36, 36. The perfect incommensurability that gives life to the entire universe. Water, by hydrous oxide. And interestingly enough, interestingly enough, okay, as I showed you, Let's move back and forth here so we can understand what's going on. Yeah, let's actually just do it here. If I can draw it out perfectly enough, or close to perfect enough. Looking at this triangle, which is actually a little bit off here, we have 1, 1 with a base of phi, and the incommensurable, which occurs at 1 over phi. Which means we have phi as a base, 1, 1, and 1 here. Right? You remember the incommensurable point? The point of incommensurability is not at the midsection of this central triangle. The Pyth this is the Pythagorean triangle, by the way. This is the only 
damn Pythagorean triangle. <laughs> By the way, when you actually take this single triangle and you make it incommensurate, then this triangle right here, we have infinite regression. Just like self-similar, uh, self-similarity in fractals, this is also a 108 by 36 by 36, just as the larger is a 108 by 36 by 36. Right? So, but we have a base of phi here, 1, 1, and phi, but in the water we have the inverse. We have hydrogen and hydrogen, we have a base of 1 and 1, and the oxygen as phi. That which gives life, this is actually what the Pythagoreans were talking about when they talk about the upside down triangle of life. Instead of 1 and 1, being up here, it doesn't matter which way you look at it, right? You've still got life, right? We have phi, 1, 1, with the angle of 36 degrees by 36 degrees by 108 degrees. This is the Pythagorean incommensurability, which gives life to absolutely everything in the universe. 1 over phi to the power of negative 3 equals phi cubed equals 1. Phi is to 1 as 1 is to phi. Phi is to 1 as 1 is to also phi cubed and phi squared. This is actually not my position. This is a mathematical necessity. It can't even exist any other way. It, I'm not able to draw the perfect logarithmic spiral, but you're actually able to see it here, like the Nautilus shell. It's kind of hard to draw a perfect logarithmic spiral. We have 1 over 5, 1, and 5. We have incommensurability. Now, let's get back to this. The incommensurability of this the midpoint is not here. That's not the incommensurate. This is the midpoint of the base. The incommensurate point is right here. Now we have 108 here, 36 here, 36 here. We have 108 here, 36 here, 36 here. This is incommensurability. This is also the only place at which the subsection of this triangle can exist to create the Pythagorean pentagram. So, let's go back to the Pythagorean pentagram. And what are we was talking about? Eugia, yugata does not mean health or cleanliness. It means proportionality, ratio, perfection. On those super ancient coins that were found in Greece, were found on one side of the coin, this. Okay, hold on a second. We don't start there, we start here. Water, Upsilon, or uh, uh, Hudr, Gamma, or Gaia, i.e. Earth, Iota, or Idea, Forms, you know, you mix Earth, okay, over here we have Theta, we also, this is where we get the English term for thermal heat, we have over here Earth, we have over here Fire, up here we have Upsilon, Okay, Hudr or water. Why would water be up here at top with air? A E R, not A I R. A E R, air. In other words, the ether. Spiritus, Spiritus Sancta, the soul, the divine principle. Why would we have it up here? Water gives life, right? <clears throat> Let's think about that for a second, see if you can figure it out. Well, it makes sense to have ideas down here, because with fire and dirt, i.e. Gaia, we are able to create things down here in the realm of human beings, right? Why the hell would water be up there? Why that? We, well, we know why the air or the ether would be up here, the divine principle. And this is exactly how it's found on the ancient coins. Why would water, or hudr, or water be up here? I don't know if you've ever seen this neat stuff that comes out of clouds. It's called rain. In other words, the stuff that gives life to trees and plants and life and crops and your ass walking around. It's made out of a gigantic bag of water. You know, you kind of see that stuff <clears throat> falling from the sky. That's why it's up here. So, Hygieia or Yugia or Yugita does not mean health. You've actually seen this. Well, an ancient Pythagorean. Uh, coin, brass coin, it was found the word to help. No, 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 no. No, honey. No, that is not what they found on the ancient coins. They, that's what we get the word. Hygiene, oh, well, that means healthy. No. 
you have to go further back. Why are you healthy? Your body is in perfect proportionality, perfect ratio. Everything is singing in perfect harmony. Ha 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 ha. You know, it's not like, wham, wham, you know, your body's not out of harmony. It does not mean health, it does not mean harmony. This is what happens when stupid asses try to interpret the original meaning of metaphysical symbolism. Okay, and we're not talking any new age crap here, okay? Homie doesn't make videos about new age craps, okay? You see a pentagram in this video? We ain't talking new age stuff. We're talking about the ancient Greeks. I translate ancient Greek, okay? We're not talking about new age crap. We're talking about the source, the real original source, the real original meaning of that new age crap, okay? You get me on that one? Do you feel me? Do you feel me? Perfect proportionality. One. Divide one unevenly. Divide each section again unevenly, and you will always end up with five. One, one, and one over phi, which equals phi cubed. And the expression for the loss of inertia actually follows this. People think, well, that's a number. One over phi to the power of negative three equals 4.23606, which is what all of this is together. 1.618 plus 1 plus 1 plus 6.618 equals phi cubed, or 4.23606. This is not a number. Well, sure it is. 1 over phi to the power of negative 3 is 4.23606. No, that's an expression. You see, when I actually do that over 1, see, this is what people don't get. This is what people in math don't get. From the principle of true Pythagorean metaphysics, they think that this is a number. Well, if we finish this, then this equals, you know, this. By the way, phi to the power of negative 3 is 0 0.23606, etc., etc., etc. They think that this is a number, i.e. 4.23. No, no, no. This is what math, this is a difference... And this is a really key point that you were never taught in school or college. There's a huge difference between math, let me draw this a little better, phi over the power of negative 3. There's a huge difference between math. Math goes, well, I'm going to solve for this. 1 over phi to the power of negative 3 equals no. No, honey. You see this? When I actually put this underneath the 1, that's an expression. That means I'm taking this and I'm expressing it by means of incommensurability. This over this is an big frigging E. This is, listen up boys and girls, this is what the Greeks called arithmos. Well, arithmetic, that means math. No, 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 no. No. Math is what modern Western society does. You plug crap into a calculator, you get an answer. You do this, divided by this, you get that. No, that's math. We ain't talking about math. No, we're talking about an expression. When I do this over one, this is the incommensurability of perfection. This is the ancient principle, the most key. It's one of, it's not the only one, but it's the most principal expression of Platonic Pythagorean incommensurability. Which, by the way, um, as I pointed out to you in another diagram, if I could actually find it here, is, let me draw this for you again before we end this out, is this. 1, 1, phi, and 1 over phi. All these together. And guess what it also is? It's also the basis for life. This is the freaking water molecule. You feel me? You feel me, boys and girls? You feel me? H2O. Water! Do you get me? Do you feel me now? If you like this video, drop a donation. Now, this is my discovery. I made it years ago. I've got proof of that and copyrighted it. Well, actually, I put it into ISBN number. So, I've only scratched the surface. I could go on about this forever, but I would probably bore the hell out of you if I haven't already, right? Thank you for watching. Goodbye.